How do you land a one-ton car on Mars? I want to talk to you about what I consider to be the single greatest engineering feat. I want to talk to you about the landing system used to land the latest Mars rover, the Mars Curiosity. Particularly the last bit, which could best be described as a 2.5 ton rocket crane. It was a platform with eight rockets that brought the rover to rest 6.7 meters above the surface. Now you can't land the rover because the dust thrown up from the rockets might damage it. So instead it hovered there and winched the rover down the rest of the way. This is why I called it a rocket crane. But to really appreciate this solution, you have to understand the problem. You see, you point your rocket at a patch of Mars so small and so far away, it's like throwing a dart from this studio here in London and hitting a grain of sand on a dartboard in New York. You travel 550 million kilometers in the full radiation of the giant thermonuclear explosion that is our sun for eight months to reach Mars. Blazing a trail of light and plasma, you cut into the Martian atmosphere at 21,000 kilometers an hour, fast enough to do London to Sydney in 50 minutes. Now the trouble with the Martian atmosphere is that it's quite thin, so you can't slow yourself properly with a parachute. But it's also too thick not to worry about thermal protection. You can melt your spacecraft. So you slow yourself as much as possible with the atmosphere. But then at the end of it, you have to jettison the heat shield. Dodging that, you deploy a parachute while you're still traveling faster than the speed of sound, a supersonic parachute, and that slows you further. But the trouble is, you're now traveling 350 kilometers an hour with a one-ton rover and no known way to land it. The crux of the problem is this. The Mars Curiosity is actually much bigger than many people seem to realize. Weighing just under one ton, it's about the size of a large car. You are doing 350 kilometers an hour, 40 seconds from the floor, with no known way to land a one-ton car. What's more, it takes 14 minutes to send radio signals back to Earth, but in NASA's own words, only seven minutes of terror to land the rover. So the whole landing has to be done automatically. What's more, it has to be done automatically on the 200 megahertz CPU. By comparison, the iPhone 5 is 12 times more powerful. You have to do all this first time with no mistakes, or the rover becomes Mars's only $2.5 billion crater. Suddenly, the idea they accomplished this with a flying rocket-powered crane seems so much more incredible. They landed the rover perfectly, with less power than it takes to play Angry Birds. First time, without error or mistake. But what I want you to take from this is that engineering is about understanding your problem. What makes this the greatest engineering feat ever is not the particulars of the solution. Each was one small step for science. Instead, it is that we should have such a good understanding of such a massive problem that we could accomplish so much with so little. We made the impossible possible. It is very seldom that science takes one giant leap for mankind. If you thought this video was out of this world, check out our Hangout with the Astronaut. And if you haven't already, subscribe.